By the end of today's episode, Paul Pogba will not be a Manchester United player. Oh my god! Okay, it's happening! Funnily enough, even Ralph Ragnick has said that most likely Pogba won't be at Manchester United next season. So if you think my career modes aren't realistic, think again. Boom. <laughs> but yeah, there are a few problems with Pogba's departure because apparently nobody's interested in him. Not a single offer has come and we've put him on the transfer list for a while. So I guess a swap deal is what we're going to be looking at. Who do we sign to replace Pogba? Well, we're in the transfer window and we're going to work towards that right here, right now. You're just ruining it. Really is a big episode for the CDs, guys, because y'all know I have not enjoyed using Pogba. Replacing him is priority. And if you are enjoying this series drop a like subscribe and let's go next up why sign a new sentiment when you've already loaned one out in van der beek is playing under the new manchester night boss den Haag, so it'll be a realistic fit you do make a good point van der beek is a top class player and i think next season he's going to be a part of our team and we'll certainly use him but right now it's about replacing pogba and getting someone else so yeah plus the player i'm thinking of getting is not going to be playing in the same position as van der beek so don't you worry about that but yeah van der beek will be a part of our squad next season so until then we gotta figure out who replaces Pogba now. Next up, Rashford was decent in this episode. What's his current position at the club? A lot of people are like, is Rashford a starter now? What are you gonna do with him? Rashford, to be honest, guys, has been kind of underperforming for me. Three goals and two assists. You compare that to Sancho. He has been the man for me in this save, and I think that's gonna be the case. We're gonna use Rashford as backup. Alanga is the youngster who's trying to learn everything. That's probably how I've got everything planned. But yeah, for now, Sancho is number one in that position. Okay, now talking about the player I desperately want to sign, and it's Nkunku. Nkunku is not the right call, apparently, because you can't always play Bruno as a centre mid, and I think Goretzka is perfect because he can play in that centre mid role as well as CDM role. My friend, you are not wrong. Goretzka is more versatile, but I feel like it's such a common signing. It's kind of boring as well. Bo don't get me wrong, Goretzka's sentiment would be unreal. I've used him before in career mode, he's super OP. But there's something about Nkunku that I just can't, you know, put together. I just feel like it's such a fun transfer, something different, something unique. And I think he's got all the stats to be unreal for me. The pace is there, the vision, the positioning. He can even defend, like, this guy is complete. And I feel like as a modern footballer, with these attributes that he's got, it would be the dream signing. So, for me, Nkunku is the man I want to go for. For. I think I've made my decision. The question is, how much is this going to cost us? Now, before we get any further, player of the episode, Bruno Fernandes has another solid episode from him. He's going to be changing his position if we do sign Nkunku. We're going to play him in a deeper role. I think it's better for the overall balance of the team. Okay, before we actually go ahead and sign a player like Nkunku, we need to check whether Bruno Fernandes can actually play as like a centre mid. Because that's what I'm thinking. I want to convert him to a centre mid and use Nkunku at cam. Because I think that's the smart way to do this. And only two weeks and we can convert Bruno to a centre mid. A lot of people are like you should play him at cam. I feel like Bruno is so good. He can ball out in that central midfield role and still have a big impact for us. So that's what I'm deciding with Bruno Fernandes. We're going to play him in that central midfield role. He's going to be a leader, kind of like our very own Luka Modric, you could say. That kind of a position I want him to just dominate. So there you go. A couple of weeks, he'll have his position changed. Meanwhile, our budget is decent, about 88 million. Putting 99 million, you could say, with the wage budget adjustments and all. I'm going to be using Paul Pogba in the swap deal because I don't think we're getting any offers for him. Nobody wants him. I thought maybe a club like PSG would be interested, but nah, not happened yet. So let's see if we can sign Christopher Nkunku from RB Leipzig this season in the January window. Would it be possible? How much we're going to have to dish out for this player? Don't get me wrong, he's class. He is absolute quality and we need something extra in this Manchester United team. Let's see. First of all, putting Paul Pogba in the swap deal who's valued at 58 million. 30, let's do 25 million plus Paul Pogba as our first offer. Would they be interested in Pogba? They don't want him. That's a problem now. That is an absolute problem. Oh, that's a big one. That is a big one one because we can't afford an all cash deal for Nkunku. We literally can't. We legit can't. I'm gonna start negotiating an all cash deal for like
like 80 million just to see what happens. Yep, we cannot afford an all cash deal for Nkunku. I'm gonna keep trying negotiating if it's possible. Let's see. Oh, it is. It is 92 million for Nkunku. We've pulled it off. Let's go. We've pulled it off. I still need to sell Pogba if we want to do any other business. So hopefully we get offers for Paul Pogba. But right now, the main focus is getting that contract done with Nkunku. How much are we gonna have to pay him? It's an all cash deal. I thought Paul Pogba was gonna leave the club, but somehow he's staying, which we will sort out soon. But yeah, crucial squad role for Nkunku. We'll give the boy a four-year deal. Could have given him a five-year deal, to be honest. No release clause as well. And we'll give him 130,000 per week. Solid wages for an 86-rated player. Should accept it. There you go. New signing for the first time ever in career mode. I'm signing Christopher Nkunku, and I'm very excited. And would you look at that? The new signing's been unveiled. What kit number should we give him? Maybe number eight once Pogba's gone. I love that. Absolutely love this signing. Look at his stats. My good lord, is he OP. That pace, un freaking real. The finishing. Yo, he is going to be so freaking good for us. I kid you not. I'm very excited about this signing. Absolutely, I am. Let's also try and fit him in the team. We're going to put Bruno in that central midfielder. See, he's so used to playing there that he can do the job. Pogba is going to get out of here. We're going to put Nkunku in there. And we're honestly sorted. Things you do love to see. Let's freaking go, boys. I'm loving the team already. Look at the team is class. And of course, can't wait to play again with Nkunku in that new position. We also need to sell Paul Pogba to generate some cash if we want to do any more business. We got a cup game against Stoke City up next in the FA Cup. The early rounds. We're going to sim this one. We should get through a Stoke City at least. There you go. 4-0. Nkunku scores a brace. Well, things you'd love to see his first game and he's already bagged a brace. I'm still waiting on that transfer offer for Paul Pogba, but it's just not coming. I don't know what's up with it because if we can sell Paul Pogba, guys, the advantage we have is crazy. I'm still waiting on that transfer offer for Paul Pogba, man. I think when we got an offer from Inter, in the summer we should have accepted because I'm very keen on signing someone like Darwin Nunes and replacing Edinson Cavani. I think it'd be a great investment for the future but we need the money from Paul Pogba to make this happen otherwise we can't sign Darwin Nunes so it's a bit of a bummer that no offers are coming in for Pogba. Well it's now time to give Nkunku a run out and just see how good he actually is but up against a ninth placed Aston Villa team they're decent under Gerard with Coutinho and everything. We're third seven points off the top we got to win games like this. Apparently, me saying that this away kit isn't good was a bit of a controversial one. I'm gonna stand by that opinion. I still don't like this kit. Prefer the, the blue kit. It looks much more better. We're gonna run with that. For this game, lineups wise, I think I want to use Bruno in a central midfield position to just see how he works. And Kunku at Cam Ronaldo starts. That's our team for this one. We've got Felipe Coutinho playing at Cam. That's gonna be interesting. Let's do this. Alright, this is a good test to see how the idea of playing in Kunku and Bruno in those Cam... Okay, what was was that pass that was a rocket from Coutinho anyways but really want to see how everything gels together in this game and we're going to concede the first goal aren't we how typical Danny Ing scores and Aston Villa take the lead this happens so often man with me and career mode especially on ultimate difficulty well they strike first we need to fight back again oh man I just feel like my fullbacks just can't beat any players 1v1 and that's a problem Good fullbacks can solve so many different problems for you. And Kunku, that was a bad challenge on him, you know? That's a good ball for Ronaldo. If he heads it down for Anthony, it's done really well. Here he goes. If he can bring it inside. Looks for Ronaldo. First time shot. How is that saved by Emiliano Martinez? Okay, and Kunku feels nice on the ball, man. So freaking quick and smooth. Linking up well with Sancho. And Kunku back again. Sancho. Superb stuff. What a finish from Jaden Sancho. Yo, and Kunku deserves a ton of credit for that. We immediately get back in the game after some lovely bit of play between our new signing and Kunku, who we've brought in, by the way, for £92 million. Lovely. Absolutely lovely bit of play. Look at that. Sancho and Kunku. Oh, it was nice. It was so freaking nice. And that finish from Sancho. Ruthless. Already we're seeing Bruno in a more controlling role, spreading the ball out wide. You love to see it. I see Sancho in space. Go on now. Oh, Sancho. That's nice. That's very nice indeed. He looks for the cross for Ronaldo. Oh, come on, Cristiano. You've got to put those in. We still get it back with Nkunku. Bruno Fernandes from distance strikes it so well. Manchester United are firing in all cylinders. We've responded well to Willis' goal. All right, if we can get this into the box in a good spot, this will be nice. Pau Torres, first time. How is Emiliano Martinez keeping that out? We've had so many chances in this game. Lucas Digne. 
Love saying his name. Inside now as Felipe Coutinho looks for that ball. McGinn out by Fermati Cash, who's Polish, by the way. He's not English, which is a fun fact right there, but we defend that really well. And we could potentially hit Aston Villa on the breakaway. As Sancho looking for Cristiano Ronaldo. That first touch was nice, but he lacks the pace. This isn't the Ronaldo of old. He just can't burst through like he used to. It is what it is. Although we're on the attack now with Bruno. Looking for Anthony now. He's got the pace. We know that. I'm, I'm looking for a bit of support from Juan Bissaka. It has come. Back inside for Nkunku. First time effort. And there's a block from Aston Villa. We're playing some really beautiful football, man. We just need that final touch. Here we go, Anthony looking to attack. That's a smart ball for Juan Bissaka. First touch was nice. Cut back for Cristiano. He's got to score this. And just as the second half begins, we break through Aston Villa. This is what I'm talking about. If you have fullbacks, you can beat them, man. You can create so many goal scoring opportunities as Juan Bissaka is just on you. That was brilliantly done. Anthony deserves credit as well. Juan Bissaka then finding Ronaldo. And of course, in the box, you give Ronaldo that kind of space. He is going to punish you. 2-1 up. Oh, we're sending Anthony through. And I see Jaden Sancho inside the box. Ball for him. Sancho's diving header not on target. It was asking a bit too much from him because tough angle. A lot of pace in the ball. He tried. Watkins... Now inside for McGinn. Felipe Coutinho has broken through. Off the crossbar and in. That's a ruthless finish from Phil. To all. Undeserved because I think we've been so much better. But you give Coutinho a chance. He's going to punish you, man. He is going to punish you. Oh, they've got another chance here. Ollie Watkins is a menace inside the box. They've gone backwards for Lucas Digne. We're just running circles around them. Ball played back in. One Bisaka. What are you doing? Oh, my God. Horrendous. We've just signed in Kunku and all, but it feels like we're going backwards. On the pitch, absolute disaster yet again. How aren't we winning this game? I just simply don't get it. Oh, Ronaldo gets a bit of a gift. Ronaldo gets a bit of a gift, goes for goal, and we get a goal back. We get a goal back. Cristiano Ronaldo, when it matters, steps up. He's our captain, and he's leading by example. 3-3, three, three. this game's been nuts. I'm just defending against this Aston Villa team has not been easy. Luke shot as well in Kunku. And now Jadon Sancho. Positive signs all round. We're going to slow the game down a bit. Find Ronaldo. Back for Jadon Sancho now. And he's got some space to really do something. We're looking for the ball for Anthony. Controls it well. Goes for goal, but there was no space. We keep going. We keep going. And Kunku now. Good first touch. Looking for Ronaldo. Difficult angle. Strikes it. Cristiano Ronaldo. Hat-trick at the net. It's 4-3 against Aston Villa. And we've managed to turn it around at the end. Look at the way the team's celebrating. This is what Manchester United's all about. 4-3 against Aston Villa. Come on. Important three points. Who else but Cristiano Ronaldo. And Kunku, I think, with the assist there. Lovely bit of play. But what a strike from Ronaldo. We somehow are taking all three points from this game. Simply sensational. Full time and somehow we've beaten Aston Villa. I am genuinely in disbelief here. 3-2 at, at almost like the 75th minute. We somehow came back. Ronaldo's first hat-trick of the season. And it was a special one away at Villa. Against Gerrard's Villa. You'll have to see it. I still don't get it, man. No offers for Paul Pogba yet. It's, it's surprising because his contract lasts for another couple of seasons. We can't renew his contract. I need to ship him out, but no club wants him. It's, it's crazy. It's going to put on hold any other signings we want to make. Potentially maybe replacing our fullbacks or signing Darwin Nunes. We're going to have to wait until next season to do all of that because of no club being interested in Pogba. It sucks, but hey, we're just going to have to focus and what's ahead of us which by the way is West Ham at home and these games are important to keep pace with the likes of Chelsea and Pool. so let's win this okay and Kunku is a bit tired for this game so we will play Bruno at Cam and have Fowler play in that position why not I think I also want to play McTominay for this one we'll give Rashford a run out and do I want to make any other changes probably not actually yeah we'll keep it as is we'll keep the squad as is let's beat West Ham I think and Kunku is going to be the kind of player that gets tired a fair bit because the amount of work rate I got from him in that game utterly ridiculous he just did not stop running as Antonio with his brilliant dribbling looking out quite for one Bisaka do have really formed a good connection as we saw in that last game Bruno that's a good ball for Ronaldo to attack but he couldn't Rashford gets it that was smart from Marcus Rashford that was very smart indeed it's worked out well for him but he's going to go backwards for McDominay as he Fowler in space strikes it with his left foot and he almost scored his first in the Manchester United shirt 
Oh, oh, here's Jared Bowen. By the way, in real life, Bowen is absolutely killing it. He's like one of the best players in the Europa League this season. So good to see he's one of the channel heroes. But right now, it's West Ham with a chance here. Oh, they've opened us up. Offside? That's so lucky. We would have conceded otherwise. Oh, Vlasic has gone through. It's a very good ball in. How on earth has he won the header? Our defense just keeps letting me down, even without Harry Maguire. And I just can't figure out what the problem is. West Ham and I to take the lead, but with the firepower we've got, I think we can get the comeback done, so don't you worry. Oh, here we go. Anthony attacking, and he's managed to break through. Gets the ball back in for Ronaldo. He's got to score that. Ronaldo has got to squeeze that in. What a chance it was. And people saying Anthony doesn't score enough, it's because he's much more than that. He's more of a creator in this team. The way he just bursts down the wings, it's a joy to watch. Anthony... Oh, we're sliding it through for Cristiano, who's in brilliant form in this episode. Ronaldo, can he put this one in? Lovely finish across the keeper. Driven shot. Fine goal from Manchester United. We're back on level terms with West Ham. It's 1-1. One, one. Oh, come on, push him. One, Bissaka. That's very smart play. And look at that, man. That's That's got to be a booking. A yellow card. Could have easily been red in my opinion. There's Anthony again. Oh, that's lovely if Ronaldo can get there. He does. Ah, oh, Ariola with a good save. To be fair, Ariola positioned him really well. This Anthony-Ronaldo connection, it's nice. It really is nice. Again, Rashford has just been synonymous in this game. I feel like he's struggling for confidence. Like, he's just completely, like, heartbroken that ja Sancho has taken his spot. And I just don't think he's playing his best football. He's just been very lackluster, very lazy. The work rate's not been there. Completely unlike Sancho, who's been just honestly firing for us in an incredible way. Another disappointing game from Rashford so far. Oh, we're sending this through for Ronaldo. What's happened there? How has he kept himself on? Ronaldo laying it off for Marcus Rashford. And what is Rashford doing? I shouldn't have passed it. I shouldn't have passed it. Why was West Ham so open there? I have no idea. Oh, that's a good ball. That's a very good ball for Roger. It goes for goal. I can't believe this man. Such a silly goal to concede. And the worst part is on the other end, we almost had a chance to win this game. Just so, so dumb for me. Gonna make a change. I need Sancho on the pitch. Absolutely. Where's he? Sancho. I need Nkunku too for Fowler. Let's switch them around. And let's hope that we can turn this game around just like we did against, of course. Here we go. Sancho again. Out wide now for Luke Shaw. I see Ronaldo in a good spot to attack the header from Cristiano Ronaldo. That's Ronaldo at his absolute best. How on earth did he do that? That's a classic Ronaldo header, just like in real life. And we're back in this game, courtesy of, of course, the main man himself, Cristiano Ronaldo. I need a replay on that goal. Luke Shaw, credit to him for the delivery. It was, it was inch perfect, but look at Ronaldo. The leap, no chance for the defender. Placed perfectly. We're back in this. Here's Ronaldo looking for Jaden Sancho. West Ham looking a bit exposed here. Sancho putting it back in. Can't. Ah, that was a missed opportunity. Bruno wins that somehow. Get, we played back for McDominay. There's still an opportunity here for us. Jaden Sancho still got that pace. The dribbling inside for Ronaldo and Kunku. Oh, brilliant football from us. Extra passing to just get that sure shot chance to score. And then Kunku the beneficiary of that as he puts the ball in easily. Ronaldo, what an episode he's having. Very unselfish for him to not go for goal from there. And Kunku just slaps it home with his toe, I think. And there you go. We're leading against West Ham. Yo, the game plan this episode's been nutty. Oh my God. We're leading 3-2. Two minutes added on. I don't want any funny business here. We do not want any funny business here. Go on, Luke Shaw. Pau Torres, what are you doing? No funny business. Referee, just end the game. Okay, no, he's not ending it. They're giving them one chance. They're giving them one chance. Rafa Varane takes him out at the end. Please, referee, just blow the whistle, man. You're supposed to blow the whistle. One Bisako wins that, and that should be it for the game. Is it? Is it done? Yes, it is. We've beaten West Ham 3-2, but my God, do we have to fight for every goal. The more I play with this team, the more I realize the real problem is actually with our defenders. Rafa Varane, as good as he was at Madrid, a 6.3 average rating here. Pau Torres a 6.4. Trust me, our centre-backs are underperforming at an unbelievable level. I didn't expect this at all. So maybe instead of Darwin Nunes, if we can sell Pogba, a centre-back is what we need. Finally, we get an offer for Paul Pogba, but of all clubs, it's Real Betis. Are you kidding me, man? Are you 
actually kidding me? Nah, not real betties. Um, I don't want William Carvalho. They've offered a swap deal. So we'll try and negotiate them an all cash deal for Pogba. Hopefully that works. And let's see what betties come back and say. But that might be happening. In other news, we can now change Bruno Fernandes, as we say, his position to a sentiment, which I'm going to do. There you go. We'll put him on like maybe a plan to just improve some of his defensive stats as well. Because why not? Another game in the mighty FA Cup, which we're going to sit out. But I am going to use the likes of Elanga and I'll give them a chance to shine in this competition. We're going to... Do we play in Cuckoo? I think we should, just to get him more accustomed to football in these streets. Uh, we'll also play Dalot, Dean Henderson. There you go. Simming this game against Burnley. FA Cup. Can we get through? Ah, oh, it's a draw, which means there's going to be a second game. Ah, what a waste. No news on Paul Pogba, by the way. I'm surprised. What are Real Betis going to say? Real Betis are willing to pay 55.7 million. Yeah, Pogba was thinking he'd be joining PSG in all these clubs. Instead, he could be on his way to Real Betis, and I am going to sell him. Oh my god, it's happened. Paul Pogba could be sold to Real Betis by the end of this one. We'll have to sim through and see what happens here, but transfer deadline day approaching, it is possible. Another offer coming in for Pogba, and Real Madrid offering us Eden Hazard, plus 14.8 million. Yo, that's actually a pretty interesting swap deal, but I'll be real, I'm not too keen on Eden Hazard. What am I going to do with him? Like, doesn't fit what we're trying to want what, what we want to do but that's a very interesting offer we will delegate it Real Madrid is a club I think Paul Popper would like to join more so let's see what happens here let's see where does he decide to go I think he's rejected Real Betis I think he has I think Paul Pogba has rejected Real Betis oh no it's ongoing negotiations are ongoing and Real Madrid are willing to pay us 61.3 for him which I've accepted oh my god oh my god so Pogba is almost surely on his way out the real thing is if we get some money on time on deadline day we could actually make one more signing what do you guys think let me know in the comments i don't want to play through ahead without reading through comments and without pogba's sale happening so we're going to end the episode off right here heard in the premier league we signed in kunku in this one pogba is going to leave in the next one are we going to have enough time to sign a replacement on deadline day find out in the next episode drop like subscribe i'll catch you all for the next one peace